So we are going to prove the statement that's on the whiteboard behind me. We'll consider a field K and let F in K of X be a separable polynomial, meaning it has distinct roots in a splitting field. We want to prove that F is irreducible, meaning that it can't be factored in K, if and only if the Galois group of F acts transitively on the roots of F. So first of all, let's go over what this last part of the question is saying. In order to talk about the Galois group, we first need to talk about the splitting field of our polynomial F over the base field K. So we'll let L be that splitting field, and we will define Z to be the set of roots of F in the splitting field L. So Z is just the set of elements of L such that F of that element equals zero, just the roots of a polynomial. Finally, we'll define G to be the automorphism group of this field extension L over K, which might also be called a Galois group since L is a splitting field of our polynomial F. Now the question talks about the Galois group of F acting on the roots of F, so we need to consider a group action. Here G is the Galois group of F, and G is going to act on the set of roots of F, which we said is Z, and let's talk about how this group action works. The elements of G are automorphisms of the splitting field L that fix the base field K. So the elements of G are these automorphisms, we'll denote an automorphism by phi, and phi is going to act on a root of F, so we'll call that R. The way this group action will work is simply that phi applied to a root R is just phi of R. Remember that phi is a function on the splitting field L, and R is an element of L, so we can just take phi of R and define that to be the group action. Let's quickly prove that this is a group action. There are two things we need to prove for that. First is that if we take the identity element of the group and apply it to any element of the set over here, then we will get just that same element back. Now the identity element of the group G is the identity map, which just maps every element to itself. So if we take the identity map and apply it to R, that's the identity map of R, which is just R. So that first condition is satisfied. The second condition is that if we take two different automorphisms and we apply them in sequence, this should be the same thing as multiplying the two automorphisms first and then applying that product onto the element of L. Now, let's take a look at what each of these is individually. Psi applied to R, that's just Psi of R, and then phi applied to that is just phi of whatever that output is, so in this case, Psi of R. If we look on the right side, when we think about multiplication in the automorphism group, that just means applying the functions in sequence. So this is phi composed with Psi, that function composition applied to R, but of course, Function composition is exactly what we're doing on the left side as well. So both of these equations are satisfied, and therefore this is a group action of G acting on Z. So I've moved the definition of that group action over here, and now that we've gone through the definitions, we can begin with the proof. First of all, let's let alpha be an element of Z. So we're taking alpha to just be some root of our polynomial in the splitting field. The first thing we're going to consider is the orbit of G on alpha. What this means is, what is the set of elements that we can get if we start from the root alpha and we apply every single automorphism of L over K onto that one alpha? So this is the orbit of alpha, and we're gonna consider the size of that orbit. Well, there's one way that we can compute the size of that orbit, which is with the orbit stabilizer theorem. And that states that the size of the orbit of alpha under the group action G is equal to the index of the stabilizer of alpha in the group G. Now we have to ask, what is the stabilizer of alpha? So the stabilizer is the set of elements in the group that fix the element alpha. So we're looking for automorphisms phi, which are automorphisms of the splitting field of L over K, such that phi of alpha equals alpha. Now, recall what the automorphism of L over K is. 
This is the set of automorphisms of the splitting field L such that phi restricted to the base field K is the identity. So phi of any element of K will just equal that same element. So we have two different conditions here that say that phi fixes some element. Here we say that phi fixes every element of K, and here we say that phi also fixes this specific root alpha that we chose at the beginning. So if we combine those two statements, what we get is that phi fixes any polynomial in K adjoin alpha. So any polynomial in this element alpha with coefficients in K, if we apply phi to that, well, phi fixes all of the coefficients and it also fixes alpha, which means it's going to fix this entire result. And if we ask what exactly are the restrictions that we put on an automorphism for it to be an element of the stabilizer of alpha, it is exactly this restriction. It's an automorphism of L that fixes K and fixes alpha, or equivalently, an automorphism of L that fixes K adjoin alpha. And so that means that the stabilizer of alpha is exactly the automorphism group of L over K adjoin alpha. Because by definition, this is the set of automorphisms of L that fix K of alpha. So now we know that the stabilizer of alpha equals the automorphism group of L over K adjoin alpha. Now we have to figure out what this value is. And here's where we can apply a little Galois theory. Recall that we defined L as the splitting field of F over K. And because of that, we can apply a result from Galois theory, which says that this index of G in the automorphism group of L over K adjoin alpha is equal to the index of the field extension K adjoin alpha over K. So this is a result that applies when L is a splitting field of F over K and alpha is a root of F, where G is the Galois group of L over K. So putting this all together, we have that the size of the orbit of alpha under the group action G is equal to the index of the field extension K adjoin alpha over the base field K. And now it just remains to get some information about each of these individually. So let's first take a look at the orbit of alpha under the group action G. Remember our goal is to prove that two statements are equivalent. The first statement is that the polynomial F is irreducible, and the second statement is that the Galois group of F acts transitively on the roots of F. In this case, the Galois group of F is G, and the set of roots of F is Z. So our goal is to prove that the action of G on Z is transitive. Now what does it mean for a group action to be transitive? What that means is, starting from any element of this set, we can get to any other element of the set by applying some automorphism in G. We can think about that in terms of the orbit, because the orbit of alpha is the set of all elements that we can get to from alpha by applying some automorphism in G. So if G is a transitive group action on Z, that means that the orbit of alpha is the entire set Z, because the set of elements that we can reach from alpha is all of them. And if we're looking at the size of the orbit, if G acts transitively on Z, that's the same as saying that the size of the orbit is the same as the size of the entire set. So the automorphism group G acts transitively on the set of roots Z if and only if the size of the orbit G on the root alpha is equal to the size of the set Z. Now we have to ask what is the size of Z? Well, Z is the set of roots of F. So the size of Z is just the number of roots of F. But recall we said that F is a separable polynomial, which means that in the splitting field, all of the roots are distinct. So the number of roots of F is equal to the degree of F. So now we have a condition on the size of the orbit of alpha under G. Now we need to take a look at the other half of the equation, which is the index of the field extension K adjoin alpha over K. And in order to do this, we need to take a look at whether the polynomial is irreducible, or rather, what does it mean for F to be irreducible? Well, if F is irreducible, 
then the index of the field extension k join alpha over k is equal to the degree of f. Because alpha is a root of f, so when we introduce a root of an irreducible polynomial, the degree of this field extension is the same as the degree of that polynomial. On the other hand, if f is reducible, then that means we can factor it, and the minimal polynomial of this root alpha is smaller degree than the degree of f, and therefore, the degree of this field extension will be smaller than the degree of f. That means that we have an equivalence where f is irreducible if and only if the degree of the field extension k join alpha over k equals the degree of f. Because if f is irreducible, then f is the minimal polynomial of alpha, so the degree of adjoining that root as a field extension is the degree of f. And if f is reducible, then it's not the minimal polynomial, so this degree of the field extension will be smaller. Now let's try to put everything together and see if we can prove the original statement. Both of these equivalences are asking whether some number equals the degree of f. In this case, it's the size of the orbit equals the degree of f. In this case, it's the degree of the field extension equals the degree of f. But here's the thing. At the beginning, we proved that the size of this orbit equals the degree of this field extension. So the size of this orbit equals the degree of f if and only if the degree of this field extension equals the degree of f. In other words, these two on the right side are equivalent. And now we can trace exactly the equivalence that we want. f is irreducible if and only if this degree equals the degree of f if and only if the size of this orbit equals the degree of f, if and only if g acts transitively on z. And that gives us our final proof that the polynomial f is irreducible if and only if the Galois group of f acts transitively on the roots of f. Now there is another way that you could approach proving this statement, which is to consider case by case. First, you suppose that f is irreducible, and you prove that the action is transitive. Then you suppose that f is reducible, and you prove that the action is not transitive. But the reason I wanted to show this proof is that I think it's a really nice and clean way to approach the statement that makes use of a lot of interesting identities. We start out by applying the orbit stabilizer theorem and a result from Galois theory concerning the index of this field extension versus the index of the automorphism groups, and we realize at the end that both of the two statements we're trying to prove are really asking whether some number equals the degree of f. But it so happens with these identities that the two numbers that we're considering are equal to each other. So of course, one equals the degree of f if and only if the other one equals the degree of f. So that's a nice result and an interesting proof in Galois theory.